not all of our aggressive fish are the things that we normally associate with being aggressive, like African cichlids, uh, sometimes some of our other, like, angelfish and other types of South American cichlids. Sometimes, even peaceful schooling fish, like the rainbow fish behind me, can get a bully. So how do we deal with an aggressive fish without necessarily having to move it to an entirely different tank? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and we're going to talk about dealing with aggressive fish in your tank. Now, the obvious thing that most people are going to think of is move that fish to a different tank, isolate that fish to a different tank. But not everyone has lots of tanks lying around where they can just go, oh, you're a problem over here. Well, I'm going to move you over there, right? Sometimes we have to find other means to create peace or some other fashion to break up some of that aggression. So we're going to go through a couple of quick options. Uh, and this is all based on a question that I received from somebody who was having trouble with aggression with a male rainbow fish in one of their tanks. And this one particular male was bullying the other rainbows in the tank. This can actually be kind of common with rainbows because one male will eventually become the dominant male in the tank. And what they're trying to do is get all the other males and maybe even females they're not interested in out of their territory, big quotation marks on that one, right? In order to then court the female or females they are interested in. And sometimes this aggression isn't aggressive, but it's more like a show of courting and sparring. So let's talk about some easy ways to fix some of those problems. And then if those still don't solve the problems, some kind of next level solutions. The first solution I have for you, and you're gonna, you're gonna see some B-roll here to give you an example. Uh, this tank only has two rainbows in it, but you'll notice that I have big chunks of like Java Fern and Bulbitis in this tank that allow me to break lines of sight and create hiding spaces that are dense. And this is one of the first things I would suggest is find ways, especially if you can get these plants to get height, to create physical visual barriers so that when a fish runs away, they have a spot to hide out for a little while and get completely out of sight. There are lots of great plants for doing this. You can do this with standard java fern. It gets pretty tall, uh, especially if you're in like tanks like 40 breeders, 20 gallon longs, things like that that aren't super tall. We can create these blocks in line of sight to help us help our fish so that when the, the aggressor no longer sees that fish, maybe they're going back somewhere else, that fish has a place to sit, relax, and de-stress while hopefully... Our, our bully kind of chills out or gets whatever they're trying to get done. We can also do this with stem plants. Amazon swords are amazing at this. Valisneria, crypts. Uh, it all depends on the particular size of the fish. So if we're dealing with something smaller, like maybe you've got a tank full of baddis as an example, or right? scarlet baddis, and you're dealing with a particularly aggressive male, they're not a very big fish, so you can have a dense field of crypts or other smaller plants, maybe some stems, grassy type plants, whatever, that provide lots of hiding spaces. This can also work really well if you're dealing with live bearers that tend to be more aggressive toward their fry. These lower areas of dense plant growth are phenomenal for fry to hide in. It's something that I use in my guppy mansion. Even though my fry aren't necessarily uh, under much threat from my adults, it still works extremely well in the case that you do have those problems because it gives lots of places for the fry to hide. Uh, you can also do this with some types of moss occasionally, depending on the particular type of fish. But I like things like crips and java fern for doing this work just because they're easy. Over time, they take up a lot of space and they create lots of nooks and crannies and stuff to hide in. Another way that we can do this is with our hardscape. If we're building, say, like an island of rock or something, 
have that more center. Create a physical barrier in the center of the tank so that we're splitting it. And it doesn't have to be perfect center, right? But so we split areas apart so that it requires much more work to move around all these things if you're going to chase and therefore creates that, again, physical sight line blocker. We don't necessarily have to do this with plants. We could do it with ornaments, our hardscape, whatever. But most of us nowadays, we're trying to have a nice planted tank. This is kind of the easiest methodology for going about that route and trying to build some kind of line of sight blocker so that the fish that needs to find some safe haven has options. My next tip here is a little different, I will admit, but uh, you might pay attention to the times of day that your fish are aggressive. If it is always around feeding, or it's always right in the morning when the lights come on, maybe it's right toward the end of the day, whatever that may be, let's try to break up that cycle, actually physically change the actions we're doing. So if it's always when I feed fish, then instead of feeding in just one spot of the tank, start over there, put a little food in, but now put food for the rest of the fish who might be a little more shy or maybe they're stressed because they've been bullied in the past on the other side of the tank. Spread that food around where, where it's dropping in and that might help diffuse some of that aggression, right? Some of that dominance that happens in fish. We can try to take physical actions to diffuse it if we notice that this type of aggressive behavior happens around a really specific time of day or action, we can make some small adjustments in the, the fish's life schedule, so to speak, right, to help mitigate and diffuse those things. This isn't the more common scenario, but sometimes it is centered around feeding. I know in my case, uh, after food has been fed is when I'm most likely to see like my angelfish that are over there kind of picking at each other. So I try to spread the food out quite a bit to make sure everybody gets their food. And then from there, usually there's spots for them to hide that I've developed with some of the planting techniques that I use in that particular tank. Uh, the next thing that I would say is we can take the same methodology that we use with African cichlids. If you have a particularly aggressive male and you can get other fish of a similar size and add fish density in that tank, sometimes that will prevent that particular male from picking on one fish over and over and over again. But we see this most often like in rainbow fish, which is the, the question that we had here, when we have not enough females and too many males, that the females will get harassed too much when the males are trying to court and spawn, and there's just not enough to spread because there's too few females. So my example there is maybe if you know that it's happening a similar behavior where it's a male and there's way less females than males in the tank. So kind of all the males are trying, but one male is especially persistent. Go get more females. This can happen in like cherry barbs. I've noticed this quite a lot uh, in brother-in-law James's tank. We actually purposely went out and bought only more female cherry barbs to disperse that amount of attention on the females that were in our initial batch and make it a lot easier so that there's more targets, so to speak, for our, our dumb, dumb boys to go chase after and not focus on only a couple females in the tank. And this can happen kind of in reverse. Maybe you've got only two males in the tank and one male is constantly bullying the other male because he's the dominant alpha male, if you will, in that tank. Go pick up some extra male fish. Now they'll all kind of spar with each other. It diffuses that aggression, spreads it out across multiple fish, and should, kind of like what we see in African cichlids, calm the whole tank down and reduce some of the stress across all the fish. Because eventually, either that main bully is going to get tired out of chasing everybody, or there's just so many other things that each individual fish isn't getting stressed too much. Now, what happens if all of these things don't work. You, you've rearranged your plants, maybe you've added new plants, you've, you've bought an Amazon sword, or you bought a bunch of Valisteria and created like a wall of grass to create lots of shelter, and that fish is still just chasing everybody. In this case, 
it might be something to consider isolating that fish to its own tank. And I know part of this was like, hey, not everybody has their own tank to do this, but if they're a smaller fish and you can find a place to set up an extra 10 gallon, maybe even a five gallon, depending on the size of the fish to isolate that one particular fish and reduce some of the stress, that can help. If there's one particular fish that's getting picked on a lot, it actually can be really helpful to get some of those net style in the tank breeder boxes. And you especially don't want a transparent one. You want one where it's got the mesh or something like that that helps physically stop the sight from each other. This is the important part. Isolate that fish that's being picked on, give them kind of a safe haven still inside the tank, but gives them time away from being harassed, lets them recuperate a little bit. Maybe you need a little touch of salt just to boost them up some, whatever that may be. But sometimes we need those things and sometimes you isolate the bully. Sometimes you isolate the one who's getting bullied. It depends on what you're trying to do in your particular tank. But this can often help a fish get a little rest, get a little recovery. And sometimes it kind of resets, so to speak, that like table of aggression, if you will, where this one's like, I always pick on this one fish. Fish memory is not that big, <laughs> right? In the grand scheme of things, not that fantastic. So isolating that fish for maybe even two weeks could be long enough to kind of reset everything. And then when you reintroduce that fish, try to put them in an area that has some of that protection at first so that they're not seen immediately and maybe that bully fish will have kind of reset everything and not be such a butt in the future. In the case where you need to isolate the aggressor, the aggressive fish, if you do have the ability to get a side tank, maybe you've got a quarantine tank that you don't have set up all the time, set up that quarantine tank. Put them in that quarantine tank for a while, isolate them. Sometimes they'll see this as like, I'm going to a new environment again, and they might not build up that behavior or with that fish missing for maybe like a month, the rest of the fish in your tank will kind of build a new hierarchy, so to speak. And if that fish comes back in and there's a reestablished hierarchy, it can help to mitigate some of the fighting. This doesn't always work perfectly. Um, it, it, sometimes it's a matter of like, well, this particular fish is so big compared to this other fish that I can't stop a bad behavior. And let me give you an example. Siamese algae eaters, they're great when they're tiny, they're amazing, they clean up everything under the sun, but as they get big, their mouths get bigger and they can start potentially poaching fry of small fish. So I had a point at one time where I had a very large SAE that kept my tank beautifully clean of, of algae problems, but they were starting to eat guppy fry in my guppy mansion. And I had kind of noticed like, man, I'm not seeing as many baby fish as I usually do. And then I saw some very young babies. And I saw this thing jet over and snipe one. And I immediately went, get the net. Right? I got that SAE out. I moved it to my retirement tank, never to return to that tank because it had gotten too big and had learned to predate on my fry. This is an aggressive behavior, right? But it's also natural and part of what fish do. So... In my case, that was where I knew there was no way I could fix the problem internal to tank and I had to isolate. So if you're dealing with a problem like that, sometimes it's just the way you have to go. Maybe you have a local fish store that will take fish back or you have other hobbyists that have tanks that are willing to adopt a particular problematic fish because they've got a tank full of lots of large fish. They're like, yeah, that guy's not going to be a problem in my tank. Don't you worry. Whatever it may be, sometimes it's okay to do these kind of things because as long as you're bringing the fish to another place where it's still gonna have a, a life and a home, that's okay if we're protecting the rest of the fish. Sometimes we have to do things for the greater good. It's unfortunate, but it's a matter of protecting our colonies as a whole or our environment as a whole. And if we have one really bad actor, sometimes we have to completely reset the whole thing by removing that particular problem. I know it's not the best solution, and I certainly do my best to avoid it personally, but every once in a while, sometimes you just have that fish that's a problem, and it's like, you need to go play with some bigger boys and girls and stop being a bully. Bonk. <laughs> right? It just, it does happen sometimes. Thankfully, I've really only encountered this, like, twice. 
once with that SAE and one particularly uh, bullheaded, we'll say, Rainbowfish male who was just like, I am the alpha of this tank. I will pick on everything that moves. And I knew that that fish was like mm, 60% the size of some of the biggest males in my big retirement tank. And it was finally like, you're going to the retirement tank, buddy. You're no longer the biggest fish in the pond. Uh, and this, sometimes it just happens with particular species of fish and there are ways to mitigate it. But hopefully we can instead do something like this where we've got lots of foliage, lots of cover, right? Or we build big physical blocks with hardscape or ornaments. Maybe you, you need something like a cave for certain fish to hide, like your, your pineapple hut, SpongeBob style, whatever that may be, that helps give these fish retreats so that they can rest and de-stress. That's my advice to you right now. I'm sure that everyone in the comments can give me a ton of other options and advice based on their own history. And I wanna hear from you. Have you dealt with an aggressive fish? How did you deal with that aggressive fish? Were you able to fix the problem in the tank? Or has it always come down to, I just had to move it to a different tank? Or maybe it's like, well, I got a friend with a monster tank full of big fish and I moved it over there. Whatever that may be, I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.